Why not us? It was the motto all season for this team. What does it mean to you and this group? You know, coming in, everyone doubted us this year. As you can see the preseason rankings, everyone doubted us. We brought an amazing staff in, worked all year, and this is, this is what got us. So why not us? Why can't we be the ones? Every player chose their why word at the beginning of the season. I'm curious, what was yours? My word was perseverance. Uh, we had a rough season last year, everybody knows it. What we went through and not a single person left was like, shows a lot about who we are as people, but also like how much we love this program and love Fresno and love the Red Wave. I knew that I could bring that every single day on the court, as a leader in the weight room, outside in the classroom. My word was discipline. And I actually, I had to interview one of my professors for an assignment. And she was one of my favorite professors that I've had at Fresno State so far. And I asked her what she saw in her most successful students. And she said discipline. It was kind of a, a click moment for me when I had that meeting. Cause I mean, I was um, being a freshman last spring. It was very stressful <laughs> having my first um, D1 spring was a little rough with the whole new head coaching staff and everything like that but yeah I, I just picked discipline because at the end of the day that's like makes you the most successful is how disciplined you are. My word was commitment. I initially picked it in the spring when we first picked our words because I was going through my injury and so uh, I picked it because I wanted to be committed to getting back on the court, um, doing my rehab, committing to working hard, committing to doing your best, like committing to practice every day, committing to lift. Like I think it's a really important thing to have if you're going to be on a team and you're trying to win and go to this common goal. I think that goals are interesting. I think that goals are, are can be challenging at times because if you go into a match thinking about your goal, you're thinking about the wrong thing. But I think that goals are really important to build up to what you want to accomplish. And so the first half of the season was um, very non-committal as far as goals were concerned. You know, play well, enjoy each other, you know, just very um, not stuff that you could really measure. The first half of season, I think we got through the first half of conference. And then Lisa said, by the end of the week, I want you, to, everyone to have a goal up on the back of the whiteboard, and then we're gonna narrow it down. We had a good first half of the season, um, and then the second half of the season rolls around, and so we erased the goals um, for the first half, and I had them write down now, kind of retooling what they wanted to accomplish for the second half of the season. It was very interesting because the, um, the direction of the goals was very different. It was, let's let's make the Mountain West tournament. A lot was make it to the conference tournament. Let's not just make the tournament, but let's win the Mountain West. And so the vibe was definitely different. It was much more of a action-oriented goals versus just um, feel-good goals. And I think both are important. I think that, you know, I think you have to have good team chemistry. You have to have a good culture. And those are things that you can't necessarily measure, but then you also have goals that you can measure. It was very interesting to see the change, you know, the change in the mentality of the girls of, let's just go out and play versus, hey, let's go out and win. First ever Mountain West Tournament Championship for Fresno State. How does that sound? Amazing, amazing, one of many, let's go. After we had won this all, like we're on a high, this, that, um, and then we're like, well now we have to drive six hours home on the bus. <laughs> so like literally nobody slept on the way home. Like we did not know how to act on the bus. We're like, what are we, what, what should we do? Like. Should we like talk? Do we sleep? Like, I don't know what to do. And I remember before we left, me and Brooke, and I think it was Hannah, we insisted that the trophy, trophy ride on the bus with us. So we, before we were leaving, everyone's waiting to leave. And we're like, we need to get the trophy. So I think it was Brooke. She goes down under the bus, like takes it out of the box, unpackages it all, just so the trophy could ride home with us on the seats next to us. So that was pretty sweet. <laughs> The ultimate goal when I took this program was to win the conference. You know, that was the end goal. How fast we got there, I had no idea. Did I expect or assume that it was gonna happen in the first year? No. Did I want it to? Yeah. But that's, that's, that's me being competitive. That's me having faith and believing in the pieces that we have in the program right now as far as the athletes are concerned. Realistically speaking, it's kind of you know, Cinderella story type of thing where winning or, you know, trying to turn this around 180 degrees right away, 
you know, if you're results driven like that, it's kind of hard to keep going. Goals are a good thing and goals can get in the way. I didn't ever really have a goal, but in my mind, I, you wanna go in and win in every match. There's never a match that I'm not preparing to win and that I don't believe that we can win. The outcome is the outcome, but I'm always gonna prepare and believe and be in the moment to win it. I don't think you can think that far down the road and predict something like that. I think that you just have to work for it and that's exactly what we did. If I'm being honest, I just, I don't think I had any expectations, but just to have something like that was something I just probably wasn't thinking about, but I knew we were capable of it. So when it happened, it wasn't a surprise, but I never would have happened that, or thought it would have happened that quickly. You know, we worked a lot on team culture, a lot on that, and it's paying off. We're all really, really close and it's a really good atmosphere environment and I think that's why we play so good together and so smooth and it's not even just the girls like it's the coaching staff and everything like we all get along like a huge family and I think that that's like really welcoming and that's why like we're here to like fight for each other play hard for each other work hard like everything we do feels like it's for each other and I think that's what's special about our team is like it's all about us and that's why why not us is the perfect saying because it really just is our team and our connection and our bond and it comes down to that. Next year won't be a copy paste of this year. It'll be a different team. Um, but we now know what it feels like. We have a taste of it. And so that's always a motivator and we'll certainly use that as motivation. You know, a lot of things take time to grow and get to where they need to be. And so I don't think anyone expected our team to turn around this fast, but um, I'm extremely proud of us because we did it. And I think it took a lot of hard work, a lot of motivation, a lot of mental preparation, all of the things. And I think that we wouldn't have been able to do it if everybody wasn't so determined to do so. And the five seed Fresno State Bulldogs moving on to the big dance. It was like, okay, we're still going. Like, I mean, we thought or we were done like two weeks ago and we're still going. Welcome to the 2023 NCAA Women's Volleyball Selection Special. I mean, if you told me that at 10 years old, I probably would have been like, what is a selection show? I mean, I had watched the NCAA tournament like many times, but never did I ever think that I would be playing in it. Honestly, the room was pretty quiet, I would say for the most part, and our team is never quiet. <laughs> and I think we were all just in shock, like, wow, this is actually happening. Like, it's great to be in that selection show. So the bracket, we've got it right here in front of us. It was a really big moment to actually know and see our name on the board, see Fresno State. <laughs> Stanford, the number one seed in the bottom right portion of the bracket, and they will open up against Fresno State. <laughs> Like, okay, we're actually, we're going and we're playing the number one seed. When Stanford popped up, we were just like, okay, this is real now. I could not even tell you. I think you were lying to my face if you told 10-year-old little me, like, oh, you're gonna play Stanford in 2023. I'd be like, ah, you're kidding. Like, no, there's no way. So it was just something that we just had to appreciate the moment type of thing. And I don't know, we just were super grateful. Like, really? Like, we get to play Stanford? Like, that's crazy. And um, I think it was just more of like a, like we earned that opportunity. Like this is every little girl's dream. This is like every little girl's dream growing up playing volleyball to go to the tournament. So to be able to experience this is, it's amazing. I mean, I think that all the hard work that we put in is, it's just paying off now and it's super rewarding. And I think that everybody's locked in and ready to go. This is something you dream about when you're a little girl. It's going to be really fun to play one of the best teams in the nation. The selection show was on Sunday. We figured out where we were going. We had practice on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Walking into the facility, like on that first, the first time we had practice, like it, it was literally a stage. Like it was meant to be like broadcasted on. It was crazy. I, I just remember being like, we ha we're going to practice. Practices were like the Mountain West tournament very locked in, very focused, very competitive. So we just had to bring our A game. Definitely we weren't just 
going in like, oh, we're just having fun. We're just happy to be here. Like Lisa definitely made it a fact that we are not just happy to be here. We earned it to be here. We're gonna, we're gonna prepare for this game like we prepare for every other game. When I was on the court, I was strictly, okay, this is volleyball practice. This is something I do every single day. I know what I'm doing. But then off the court, I was just more trying to focus on this being my last the couple moments with my team and my friends and playing volleyball. So I just was torn in between, I want to be where my feet are and I want to be enjoying the moment, but also I'm here on a business trip and I have to play volleyball and I have to do well. The NCAA tournament is a new season. It's a new, it's a different type of season. You know, you've got your preseason, then you've got your conference, then you've got your conference championship, and then you've got the NCAAs. Every part of that, the intensity, kind of ramps up a little bit. To take this team to the NCAA tournament for the first time in 20 some years, that's a privilege. And that's an opportunity that I will never take for granted. Something that I remember was scrolling through Twitter, Fresno State's a volleyball school now. <laughs> and I was like, oh really? It was crazy. It was such a fast turnaround. When we came back to school on Monday, we had people in our classes saying like, we're gonna watch you guys play Stanford and congratulations on your game. And I'm just, half the time I was like, you guys were watching that? Like some people that I had never talked to before in my life were coming up and congratulating us. And I think that was super special. Obviously not a lot of people get to feel like that. We go to Wahoos to get food and people are like, are you guys on the volleyball team? Like, congratulations. Like. I went to get my nails done and this girl was telling me, she was like, are you on the volleyball team? I'm like, I literally feel like a celebrity. Like, I was literally talking to Maya about this the other day. Like, She told me, she's like, I feel so proud to be a Fresno State volleyball player. Like, It is so cool. I feel awesome walking around campus knowing like I have support and this community has my back. People are really into this and I never experienced anything like that before, so it was super cool. It felt really nice to have that support and like have people hearing about what you accomplished. So it was like we belong here. It's not we just got put in. We just got put into here. Like no, we we earned the spot to be here. It's just another game of volleyball, so giving it all we have and scouting well and preparing well in this week of practice. This program in the Valley has a, means a lot to me, but knowing like this program is capable of a lot. This is a super big deal for the program. Um, seeing what we came off of last year and having this opportunity now to play in the tournament, super, super big. Hey, let's go. You know, we had the opportunity to play one of the best teams in the nation um, and prepare for them and then have a lot of people that fell in love with our program be able to come and support us. And that was, that was awesome. Well, I, it makes me really proud to be a student athlete here. I mean, we've talked with alumni in the past and gotten to know quite a few of them pretty well. And I think they're all super excited for us. And it's cool that I get to carry on a legacy that past student athletes here have done and kind of elevate the program to a different level. I mean, honestly, just appreciating the moment, staying in the moment, and keeping the main thing the main thing, which is just another volleyball game. Let's go swing away. Let's stay aggressive and see what happens. Honestly, the first set, like, we went in with fire. <laughs> we literally were working hard, we're diving everywhere, like, we're hitting hard, we're blocking, like, we're doing, we're controlling what we can control. And I think that's a big thing Lisa preached all year is like, control what you can control and that's like a super important thing in this moment. Obviously the first set, I just remember being like, okay, the score is kind of close. <laughs> if the score was close in the first set. Like I remember we were keeping up with them. So I was definitely like, okay, like we can hang with the big dogs. To be in a game like that against a team like them was something that we just wanted to embrace fully. So I think we just gave it everything that we had. We had so many supporters that came up to that match on Friday, and that was so special to see. To see fans there for us, it really hit differently. I think that like that's when I was like, wow, like people are here to support us. Like people know what's going on. We did not expect that many people to be there. Like we had our cheerleaders there, and we were just like, w they have never traveled with us ever. So just to see the amount of people that wanted us to be successful and wanted us to win and just to support us was crazy. So just like knowing how many people like cared to come was like amazing and obviously the red wave travels well as other sports too but seeing that we were also getting that support now was super cool. The red wave definitely showed out for that. You know the other sets I, I don't it wasn't anything to be upset about because of what we had done to be there. Yeah I think it was a huge confidence booster for our team like 
we were realizing that we can compete against a really good team. Like, obviously, we want to go further in the tournament, but I think that, like, getting there in the first place and playing hard and giving it all we got, like, that's very rewarding, and now we just need to continue on that. And I think that a lot of us can remember that moment and, like, remember how we played, remember what it felt like, and that will just give us more motivation to get to that moment again. Now, there's a hunger there. Now there's, you know, there's an expectation. We have set the bar, I tell the girls all the time, that they set the expectation of themselves for me. Now they set a new expectation, you know? And 24, it's gonna be a different team. Not having Molly and Hannah and Grace, that changes the dynamic. But they know that they help get this program to another level. I'm super grateful to have experienced a season like that but it's also bittersweet because I want to do it again, you know? But now that I got to experience it once and that being my final year, I would never change it. I would keep it the exact same. Proud to be in this moment with you guys and we'll be back next year. And I think it's good to taste it and now you know what it feels like and we can do this. Because, okay, we lost, but I don't care about this. The way we play, everybody in this gym, everybody, all your family is going to be proud of you. The only thing that makes me sad is that this is the last time that this group will be together and be able to compete together. That's the only thing that makes me sad about the finish of our season. Because I think every other part of tonight, we were great. This can be a common occurrence for this program. We have the ability, we have the athletes in here to be able to do that. We have the work ethic to be able to do that, hopefully. You now have the belief in yourself to be able to do that. Yes, we trained you hard, but you guys had to believe in the mission. And I think that you guys were excellent with that. The growth that we've had for this entire season is amazing. And that's because of you guys. Every single opportunity that we had when we stepped on the floor, we got better. And tonight, we got better. We didn't get the result we wanted, and I'm not into moral victories, but we got better. And that's what it's all about. Very, very proud of this group. Dogs on three, one, two, three, dogs! The seniors that have left really set the standard, and I think that's like awesome about what Fresno State Volleyball does as a program is like, you come in, you know the standard right away. I think they did a really good job of leaving their mark on the program. Can't replace people because their footprint on our program will forever be here. Like, it just goes on. I mean, it happens every year. The seniors leave and you gotta start putting new pieces into new spots. We're gonna start building a new puzzle. The younger players, you know, Amaya Sellers or an Ella Smith or a Jaden, um, or Diani, like how their roles shift and change. Who's gonna step up at the end of the day? It's like, who's gonna step up to continue and kind of push this program to its highest potential? Returning players that have a lot of experience, Brooke Cowie, um, Casey, Puri, she's coming back. I'm coming back because I feel like I'm not done yet. Uh, I mean, I played four years here and I feel like there's still room for me to grow. Like, I'm not at my full potential yet. With this new staff, I mean, like, who wouldn't want to come back? I mean, this is after such a great season. I think there's just so much more to prove to the world that what Fresno State can do. Maya M, um, Ella Rood, you know, Presley, how does their role go to another level? Because that's the senior class. You know, they always say you're going to do, you're going to go as far as your seniors take you. Well, Grace, Hannah, and, um, Molly took us pretty far this year, you know, and so what is that next, that graduating class in, in 24, what are they going to do from an impact standpoint? Olivia has a lot of growth within her to get better um, and to just raise her level. Sid Gazaniga, she, you know, she went from a starting libero to an integral DS for us, you know, and how is her role going to continue to grow as a leadership person? Jenna Legault, like she was a freshman this year. Addie's role is going to continue to expand, you know, so everybody's role will morph into something different. 24, that's our class, and so we're excited about adding those players into the mix of what we have right now. I'm very, very excited to get some new people. I think that it's always good to add to the mix. It's just exciting 
to be able to bring new faces in and like build different relationships with different girls. And that's like where we do that is in the gym in the summer where we're working hard. A lot of girls are looking for high level programs. We are a high level B1 program and like we've earned the right to be there. This program now is in a place where we can be in the top every year and that we can go into gyms and expect to win. We're not going into gyms hoping or guessing or maybe we can win this game, we don't know. This can become something that's normal for our team. Like, we could be sitting here every year. That is just establishing now the groundwork for this to happen every year here. I think this will change the entire projection of how Fresno State Volleyball has always been seen. I appreciate the opportunity to work with these guys and that's something that we talk about in our gym is you get the opportunity to do stuff um, and if you take that it's a get to versus a have to you know and I think that that's just a mindset of I get the opportunity to come into the gym or come into the weight room or whatever every single day and represent this program and work with and lead these student athletes. Keeping the mindset of why not us even though we're still you know, we're not necessarily last anymore, but that doesn't mean that we have to change that mentality, you know? There's gonna be new girls, we're gonna see new faces, some of the same faces in the fall, so it's just preparing and trusting that no matter what. So um, I'm excited to see just what happens, because anything can happen in this conference. I mean, everyone's physical, everyone's good, but it's like, who's gonna earn it at the end of the day? Who's gonna have enough drive to go out and actually do it? do it. So I think knowing what we can accomplish now going into next year, I'm so excited to see how we start the season and how we come out against teams. The biggest takeaway I'll take from this program is the people that I've met and the friends that I've made because I don't know what I would do without them, you know. So if I were to never be able to come back, it would be really hard because this is just the place that brought me everything that I know, you know. So I don't know. I just thank Fresno State so much for being great in the relationships that we've made and just everything that we got to experience together. I think that's what made us strong. So yeah, just the relationships. I don't know what I would do without them. It's so cool that I get to play for such an amazing place. And I appreciate that so much more than I could even explain. It's like, these people are truly special here. And I think that it's super cool that I get to be a part of this. Fresno State is your Mountain West champion for the first time in program history.